I started working with Dr. Arkington 10 years ago and I become a storyteller, I learned from him. So man, many of the stories are not true, but this one that I'm gonna tell you, it is true. So most, a lot of you have signed up for this few days that supposed to be in the fall, last year. So we set up this few days in the fall. It was a little cooler, a little better, and it was the good time for it. So, but that day, it was when the hurricane was passing on the East Coast. So that evening. So we supposed to have the field day in the morning and we have a hurricane on the evening. And it was far, a little far from here. We could barely have some rain out of the hurricane. And we were in that dilemma if we're gonna have the field day or not. So we were juggling around. So and I decided, well, let's have the field day. The worst case scenario, we'll get wet. But we will have the field day. So then I called Glenn and I said, Glenn, what do you think? And you know, Glenn is excited about four every day. So I just I said, oh, let's have the few days. <laughs> that's not a problem. So then I said, well, we will have the few days in the fall. That's great. Then my wife called me and told me, you will not have the few days. <laughs> it was very disappointing, but I just decided to do not have the few days for some reason. So we canceled. <laughs> and I think, I, I hate to admit that, but it was the right thing to do. Because by the time that was like 10 o'clock, it was raining really heavy, and we have gust winds and everything. That was the right thing to do. But anyway, that is just to tell you that we canceled that time, and we were debating if we're going to have the few days this year because of the heat. It was later. We want the plants to recover. So then, um, João Sanchez, that is the next speaker. He's a PhD student in my program. He was the one that came to me and said, let's have the few days. So, and he was the one that put a lot of things together and organized and, and you know, got the experience to do it. So he will have, I would like to ask you a round of applause because he, he was the one that did most of the work. And I am just here to tell the stories and walk around and get the donuts. So, and, and uh, he will be our next speaker. So uh, he will tell, talk to us a little bit about the, the research project that is right there that you're gonna see at the end of the few days. So the program now, uh, João will give the presentation. They will give the specific data about what happened to those plots that we're gonna visit. So then we'll have a question and answer section with uh, Glenn Emerson. So he'll be available to us. Glenn was nice to, to come and be available to us if we have some practical questions or some questions that about his experience here in South Florida. After that, we finish the question and answer section, so we will walk to the plots, and then we, we can have more questions there if you'd like to, and then we will adjourn. So, João is our next. Thanks, Dr. Vandermini, for the introduction, <laughs> and thanks for the applauses. Uh, so, here beginning our conversation today, uh, I'm gonna start saying that, as you know, the rhizoma perennial peanut is a warm season legume that is being suggested to be used in grass legume mixtures with bahia grass, okay? And we have data showing that whenever you do this mixture, you can improve, you can decrease the dependence of nitrogen fertilizer on the bahia grass. You can also improve. Okay, can you hear me now? <laughs> okay, great. So, yeah, and you also, uh, can improve uh, your <clears throat> the animal productivity in your pasture, okay? So it is it is a advantage to have a, such mixture of bahia grass and perennial peanut. However, you all know that to achieve that point, there is a very complicated phase of the establishment. As you know, to establish the peanut in that mixture, it is particularly uh, a long process. It requires proper management, and also it is really expensive, okay? So it is really important to do it right because if you messes, if, if it goes wrong on the establishment phase, it may compromise the persistence of the legume for, for uh, the years to come in the mixture. Okay, so in order to address this issue, the University of Florida has done a lot of research, particularly Dr. Sullenberger's group, as he himself said, has done a lot of work, has tested a lot of techniques and strategies to try to come up with better recommendations for the establishment phase, okay? So, uh, in one of the researches published by his group, Dr. Molinix and collaborator in 2014 evaluated uh, different varieties in terms of establishment, and this is what 
when it was published that EcoTurf, uh, as it was discussed before, it had a really good uh, establishment. It, it had a really good ground coverage and also low weed encroachment when compared to the other varieties. So besides the other, other advantages, like not being so susceptible to stun virus, it also had a very good uh, establishment performance. Also, uh, another topic that was studied by the group and also presented really interesting data is the effect of the seed bed pre preparation on the establishment, okay? So basically, uh, previous researches have shown that the effect of tilling or not tilling the seed bed before the planting uh, was not very clear. So sometimes it was effective, sometimes one was better, sometimes was the other. Sometimes it, w it depended on the station. So it, the data was not clear about it. And in 2014, uh, Dr. Uh, Castillo published a paper showing that uh, they decided to try a new uh, combination of techniques on the establishment, okay? So what he did, uh, besides tilling or not tilling the plots, he tried to spray glyphosate and kill the Bahia grass before he did it. So it was a couple of months uh, that they, I guess they sprayed in around October and they planted their plots in February, so mid spring. And what he observed was that whenever they used the strategy, the coverage, the ground coverage by the peanut was actually greater when they did not till the ground when they tilled when compared to the tillage. And this is really interesting data and uh, it could like it means that in that particular condition it was more advantageous to not till the ground and to save some money on the establishment phase. However this is the only experiment that I am aware of that tested this uh, strategy to establish the Bahia, the Pintoy, sorry, the rhizoma peanut into the Bahia grass pasture. And this is, uh, this is a thing that really was interesting to try in new areas. So even that, uh, as Dr. Dubé said, this experiment has been replicated in several locations around the station. And the objective here was to compare the establishment of ecoturf versus florigrace, which is sort of a the standard variety, and un managed under two establishment strategies. There are the tilled and non-tilled seed bed, like similar to what was done by Dr. Castillo, okay? So now telling you a little bit about we, what we did here. I'll need my notes for the details. So, uh, the treatments that we used here, as I said, were the combinations of ecoturf and florigrace and two seed bed preparations, no till and till, okay? Uh, so our plots here, as you will see, they are about 45 feet by 30 feet. They have three peanut strips. Each one is about six feet wide. And those strips are separated by around seven feet wide Bahia grass strips from each one, okay? Uh, so the experiment lasted from May to November of 2014 and 2015. So it is about our, we're beginning our third year of the experiment this year. And uh, we started managing this area in May of 2014. So in May, we came and we applied 900 pounds to the acre of lime. We also applied 90 pounds of KCL to the acre and also we spray the strips where peanut was going to be planted with glyphosate in a pretty high rate at five quarters to the acre, okay? And we came back in July for the planting and in the plots that were supposed to be tilled, we use a rotovator to till the area and get rid of all the, 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 the dead bahia that was in the coverage. So we made sure it was really well tilled, okay? And then we, use the Bermuda King planter to plant the, the rhizomes at a rate of 1,100 pounds to the acre, which is around 90 bushels to the acre. 
So uh, we also we also uh, on in each one of the years we use uh, impose and 240 to control to control weed uh, in invasion. So the impose we use it a four ounces to do. Sorry. <laughs> so we use the impose at four ounces to the acre and the 24D at two pints to the acre. And we did it once in each of our experimental years. So in the first year we did the spring in September and in the second year we did in March, okay? Sorry, and there we go. Uh, and the evaluation, the variables that we evaluated, we evaluated a lot of them, but today we're going, only going to talk about three. There were the peanut coverage, and here I'm going to present the peanut coverage in the second year, and also the peanut yield, and this we evaluated once in the first year by the end, and another by the end of the second year, and we also evaluated the root yield by the end of the first year, okay? So, Okay, I don't know if you can see the numbers from there, but first result that I would like to show you is the coverage in percentage. So I have two points to talk about here. First of all, although we had a little difference between the ecoturf and Florida grays, they were not statistically different. So it means they basic, basically had the same coverage, okay? And uh, another point that I would like to talk about here, just a little, uh, just a second, Dr. Vendramini, is that when we compare, uh, so this is the average of the second year. So just for you to have an idea, we range it from around 10 to around 30 by percent by the, the end of the second year. And when we compare this data with uh, establishment experiments done like in Gainesville, our data, they show less coverage of peanut when compared to those areas, okay? So some areas they had 30, some papers show that they have 30% of coverage by the end of the first year, while well, it took us another extra year to reach that point. So now something interesting, uh, we had an effect of seedbed preparation. So in the plots, where we tilled, we had a better coverage compared to the plus that we did not till. Okay, and this is also really interesting because, uh, in our case, it is agrees to what was presented, to what was published in Dr. Castillo's paper, and uh, it means that in our, for our conditions, things work a little bit different, and we've been trying to figure out why, what could have caused, and although we really don't have a really right answer for that question yet. We have some speculations, like one of the main differences between our experiment and Dr. Castillo's was that our plots were established by mid-summer, or theirs were established by mid-spring. So we all know that we have lots of differences in terms of rain, temperature, and weeds in both of those uh, periods. And we think it might be related to the effective of one technique versus the other. Okay, but we still gotta work on the date and figure out why it happened. About the yield, uh, we also uh, have the effect of the seedbed preparation. So here you see the data from year one and year two in the columns and on the lines. You see the data from the no-till and tilled plots, okay? So basically, in the first year, we did not have the effect of seedbed on the, on the peanut yield that was present in the area, while in the second year, we had a great yield for the tilled plots, right? And it agrees with the previous chart that showed that we had a greater uh, ground coverage in the tilled plots, so it might be related to the uh, greater yield as well. Next, please. Uh, so this is still on the yield in pounds per acre. 
but this time we were comparing equaturf and fluorograce, and we also got a uh, statistical difference here. So again, in the columns we have the years, and on the line we have the the varieties. And as you know, in the first year, as you see, although there's the numbers are different, the small letters on the side indicated that they are not statistically different. However, in the second year, we had a slight greater uh, yield for ecoturf when compared to florigrace. Now, this is also interesting. Uh, although with ecoturf, as uh, was shown by Dr. Sullenberg and also Dr. Dupe, it is more tolerant to stunt fires and it, it, we believe it might be related to this response in productivity in the second year rather than in the first. Okay, so next, please. Now we're just going to present the root yield uh, in thousand pounds to the acre. And for root yield, we did not have any uh, effect of the oral treatment. So it didn't matter if we use ecoturf or florigrase or if we tilled or if we did not till the root yield, and this, and when I say root yield, is the root inside of the planted strip, so included the roots of the peanut and also roots of grasses and weeds that were around. So they did not, they did not vary, and they were around 8,000 pounds to the acre. Next, please. And uh, again, the till and no till, they uh, were not statistically different, okay? so. Just to con this is my last chart. Just to conclude, based on our data, we observed that ecoturf uh, it has similar establishment capacity than florigrase in our conditions here. Although it might have a greater productivity, as we observed in the yield data, and also for specific conditions of establishment, the prepared seed bed provided us a better establishment. Then the, the sorry the till provided a better establishment than no till, and I guess that's it. If you all guys have a question, we will we'll make the walk around after, and we can talk about. We have lots of more data and things that we can discuss. Thank you.